Another property that we like to measure and compare is density. So for density, this is a physical property. And it's actually a pretty darn important physical property in the world around us. The official math, the official definition for density is the ratio of mass to volume. So quite literally, the equation we use to calculate density, because we could calculate it, is mass in grams over volume. And a lot of the times we see this in cubic centimeters. Remember that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. So this equation is important. We will be using this to calculate the density of liquids and solids. You're already familiar with this idea. We're just putting more quantification into it, right? The more, more of a numerical value. Let's compare two items that have very different densities. Let's do this so I can show you the examples a little clearer. I have a cotton ball right here. This is not very dense at all. It's very light, very fluffy. For the amount of space it takes up, you can even like stretch it out. For the amount of space it takes up, it's not very heavy, right? It doesn't have a lot of mass. Think about a handful of cotton balls. This takes up a pretty large volume, but it's not very heavy. It doesn't have a lot of mass. What about if I have the entire bag of cotton balls? This takes up a lot of space, right? Like it's very puffy, very poofy. There is not a lot of mass per volume. It is not very dense. Let's compare that. Let's compare a cotton ball and its density to something that's pretty darn dense. Okay. Ugh. I am showing you my 25 pound Kettlebell. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. This is dense. This, y'all, this takes up like the same amount of space as this bag of cotton, cotton balls. But this is 25 pounds. <laughs> this has a lot of mass for how much space it takes up. And can you imagine if you went to the gym and you were trying to like use weights, but like they, they took like the volume they took up was like the whole gym. It's good that these are dense because they make them portable. Ugh. Okay, so y'all get it. The more mass something has for its volume, the denser it is. Again, we can actually calculate density for an object, for a substance, and density is important to us in an everyday kind of sense, but then also in a scientific sense. Let's, let's explore those ideas. Why is density important? We know that even if two objects are equal in volume, if their masses are different, they're going to have different densities. So one, uh, if they're put on kind of the seesaw comparison, the lower density object is gonna kind of float 
above the higher density object. The higher density object is gonna drop down to the bottom. Again, this should make sense, right? If I put this on a seesaw, this kettlebell on one side, and then I put cotton on the other, we know that the kettlebell is gonna sink down. In terms of everyday life experiences with density, well, one that's really important environmentally right now is oil and water. Um, if y'all have ever mixed together types of salad dressings, you know that certain oils will float to the top. Um, so if we think of all these oil spills in the ocean, the oil actually ends up floating to the top and there are researchers trying to look into the best, most efficient ways to recapture this oil from the oceans. Think of a lake freezing over in the winter. Ice is less dense, so solid water is actually less dense than liquid water. This is important because otherwise, how could you skate on a frozen lake? You couldn't. Also, it's good for all the fishes that are living there because the top layer of the water freezes and floats, but they still have the bottom liquid layer to live in. Additionally, if we think of balloons, we know that a helium balloon will try to escape into the atmosphere. So the helium gas is less dense than the air around it. I actually am gonna advocate against using helium balloons. There's actually a severe helium deficit across the world. Um, so also balloons are wasteful, but they illustrate a good point. <laughs> Let's finish up our discussion of density on why this is an important property for scientists to use. Think back about our discussion on physical and chemical properties. So density is a physical property. Think about how we can categorize physical properties. We can define them as being intensive or extensive. Remember, an extensive property depends upon how much of it we have, like mass, and an intensive property does not depend on how much of it that we have. I want you to consider, is density intensive or extensive? We're gonna do a little experiment here with some water and ice. Okay. Intensive or extensive. So what I have right here are two cups of water, just plain old water from my sink. And I am going to put a small ice cube in the left one. So small ice. Oop, you y'all can't see that. Because <laughs> the cup. There we go. Small ice or big ice. So this is actually a mini science experiment. So let's kind of go through again the parts of an experiment, the parts of kind of a lab report thinking through it. So my question is, is density an intensive or extensive property? I will test this by using a setup of water, so liquid, and then ice. And so I'm going to see if different sizes of ice have, have different effects in the water. So if density is an extensive property, I would think maybe the big ice cube would sink, right? Something bigger seems like it would sink. But if I think it's in 
intensive. So it doesn't matter how much of the stuff there is. I think both ice cubes will float. Let's test that. Let's first drop the big one in. So it's floating, floating at the top. That's big, big, chunky ice cube. Hmm. Now let's look at tiny little ice. Boop. All right, both ice cubes float. So this, this helps prove that in fact, Density is an intensive property. That's important because say we're in the lab and we only have a little bit of sample we're working with. We can't make more of it. Density is a property we could compare regardless of how much of it we have. So density is pretty darn useful. <laughs> What we're looking at in this demo is a comparison of densities of some common household liquids. So you see that I have some honey, water in this beaker, isopropyl alcohol, dish soap, and canola oil. I'm also adding some food coloring to some of these liquids so that they're not only easier to see, but it's also more colorful, more fun. I will be adding these various liquids to the graduated cylinder you see in the back. So again, just adding some food coloring to make this stuff look pretty. What I want you to consider is the densities, the relative densities of these various liquids. You can see that this dish soap is more viscous, more dense than water. And we know that honey is pretty darn dense, but how do these liquids compare to each other? What happens if we try to layer them and stack them one on top of each other? What will happen? What will the most dense liquid do? And what will the most, or the, the least dense liquid do? So again, what you see here is just me prepping these various liquids to make them look pretty. I'm going to add them in a very specific order to the graduated cylinder to make a very pretty layered liquid density column. Let's fast forward a little bit to get to the good part where we start adding the liquids. Okay, so we've sped through some of the prep stages. What you see right here is the order I'm adding the liquids to the graduated cylinder. Honey, soap, water, oil, alcohol. I want you to think about which of these you think is the most dense and which you think is the least dense. That's honey in the very bottom. Now I'm going to add dish soap. So do you think they're gonna mix? Do you think the dish soap is gonna to go to the bottom? Let's see. So that's red dish soap. So notice that it's forming distinct layers. This is because they have differences in density. This is analogous to the ice cube in the water. One is less dense than the other, so the ice floats on the water. So I'm just adjusting the camera a bit to give you a better view. And next, I'm going to add the blue water. I made it a little bit too blue, <laughs> but let's see what happens. So notice that when I pour the water, even though some of it kind of dives down into that soap layer, it still separates back out based on the density. So water is less dense than the soap, so the water is going to float on top. And notice how that little kind of like tornado-y looking 
a little bit. So that's water. And over time, that water is going to travel back up to join the water layer. All right. So next, I actually made a mistake. And I was supposed to add the oil next. But you can see here, I accidentally grabbed the alcohol. Um, so you're going to see it hit the water. And it's kind of hard to see because it kind of, the yellow kind of blends in with the blue. But y'all, alcohol is less dense than water. So we know that the alcohol is on top of the water layer. Now let's pause a second. So my mistake is actually going to look really cool because we're, I'm about to add the oil and we're going to see the oil flip between these layers of the alcohol and the water. Look at this as the oil comes out and surfaces. And a lot of these little bubbles is actually the alcohol. So we are seeing in real time layers of different chemicals, because remember all these are still chemicals, separating out based on density.